Hey, welcome to the Electronics Channel. I'm David Williams. In this video, I want to talk about variable length subnet masking. Now, this variable length subnet masking, or VLSM, is the process of splitting an IPv4 network into smaller networks, where the new networks are not all the same size. In this particular example we're looking at here, you can see we've got LAN 1 with 20 devices, we've got LAN 2 with 100 devices, and we've got LAN 3 with 40 devices, and we also have a LAN 4, which is going to have about four, three or four IP addresses on it. Now, if we started with a slash 24 network, or a network that has 256 IP addresses in it, we could split that up into four networks, and because we've got four different networks here, However, if we split it into four equally sized networks, that would give us 64 IP addresses per network. LAN 2 requires 100 devices, so this would not work. Variable link subnet masking allows us to more optimally assign the number of IP addresses to meet the needs of each network. Now, a simple way to visualize the breakdown of a range of addresses is to use this box method. So this box currently represents a slash 24 block of network addresses. So in this slash 24 block, I have 256 IP addresses. So the way the box works is I have my starting address at the top corner of the block box and my ending address at the bottom corner of this box. So I've got this range of 0 to 255. Now if I split this box in half to do one step of subnetting, this gives me two slash 25 networks, each with 128 IP addresses. First one ranges from 0 to 127, the second one ranges from 128 up to 255. And I'm going to keep doing this breakdown until I get to the smallest possible boxes I can have. And then I can use that box with lots of little tiny boxes in it to carve out the pieces that I need for each of my individual LANs. So the next step would be to break each one of these subnets in half to give me 4 slash 26 networks, each with 64 IP addresses in them. Put this in half, and I have 0 to 63, 64 to 127, 128 up to 191, and 192 up to 255. Split these all in half again to give me a slash 27 network with 32 IP addresses in each network. So I get a range of 0 to 31, 32 to 63, 64 to 95, 96 to 127, 128 up to 159, 160 to 191, 192 up to 223, and 224 up to 255. All right, now let's split all these subnets in half again to give me a bunch of slash 28 networks, specifically 16 of these slash 28 networks, each one with 16 IP addresses in them. Oh, split them in half again. I get slash 29 networks. Each network will have eight devices in it, and there will be 32 total networks. The last split that's possible splits sets these all to slash 30 networks each with four network addresses in it, but the first and the last one are not assignable to hosts, so you can actually only have two hosts in each one of these networks. And I draw the lines in to show the splits. But since I am kind of running out of space to draw numbers in, I'm just gonna copy in a new typed out box. So here's my last split, which is a slash 30 with four hosts four IP addresses per network. So you're now wondering, how am I going to use this box to help me create variable length subnet masks? Well, what you do is you would take your requirements for subnets, arrange them in order from largest to smallest, and then block off parts of the box here that would meet the requirements of each of your subnets. So let's look at an example. So I've got this network here that's created of two LANs with a given number of hosts. 
a WAN which just connects these two routers together and I'm starting with a network 192.168.7.0/24. So if I put these in order of largest to smallest, I've got LAN 2 which has 60 hosts in it, LAN 1 which has 20 hosts in it, and the WAN which only has 2. For 60 hosts, I'm going to need a network size of 64. For 20 hosts, I'm going to need a network size of 32, and for 2 hosts, I'm going to need the network size of 4, which is the smallest that I can have. So my block of 64 is going to be taken up by this block of 0 to 63. Then I'll take the next 32 addresses, which is going to be 64 to 95. And then the final block, which is only going to require a network size of 4 for the WAN, can be this block right here. So LAN 2 network address will be 192.168.7.0. We started with a slash 24, we cut it in half to give us a slash 25, cut it in half again to give us a slash 26 and have 64 devices. So this will be slash 26 network. The next network, the network address is 192.168.7. Well, it's the first address in that block, .64. This is cut in half from the LAN 2, so this will be a slash 27 network. And the last network is 192.168.7.96. And this is the smallest network we can have, which is a slash 30. So now I've got the networks defined for LAN 1, LAN 2, and my WAN, and I was able to do that in the most optimal fashion, not wasting any IP addresses. Now I have all of these blocks available to potentially assign to other networks in case I, in case I have need to, to expand my network in the future. Okay, here's another example with three LANs and two WANs, and you can see the different sizes of the LANs, and each one of these WANs is only going to need two addresses because these are just point-to-point connections between the networks. So first step, organize these subnets in order of size. So I have LAN 2, which is the biggest, requires 115 addresses. LAN 3 is the next biggest, it requires 40 addresses. And LAN 1 is the smallest LAN with 25 addresses. And then I've got these two, two WANs connecting all these LANs together, WAN 1 and WAN 2, both with the size of two addresses. So what's the network size that I need for each one of these? For To get 115 addresses, I will need to have the network size of with 128. To get 40 addresses, I will need the size of 64. For 25 addresses, I'll need the size of 32. And for two addresses, I'll need a network size of 4. So that first network of 128 is going to take up addresses 0 to 127. So there's my first big block. The second block will take up the next 64 addresses. So the next block of 64 addresses is right there. LAN 1 requires a block of 32 addresses. So the next 32 addresses will be these ones here. And then the two WANs each need four addresses. So this will be for W1, and this block will be for W. Two. So there's the five networks that I need, and I've blocked it off so I can see the starting and ending address for each one, which tells me the network address and the broadcast at, and the last address for each one. LAN 2, its network address. Oh, well, let's say I, for, I forgot to designate what block I have for this. So let's say this is 192.168.77.0, and it's a slash 24 block. So the network address will be the first address in this LAN for LAN 2. So that'll be 192.168.77.0. It's half the size of the slash 24, so this is a slash 25 network. The next network, its first IP address is .128, so that will be the network address for this LAN 3, 192.168.77.128. It's half the size of the previous one, so this is a slash 26. LAN number 1 starts at 192, so that's the network address. 
8.77.192. This is a slash. It's half the size of the previous one, so that'll be a slash 27 network. And then these will both be slash 30 networks. YN1 has a starting address of 192.168.77.225. That's the so that's the network address. This is a slash 30. And the last one, 192.168.77.228. And again, it's a slash 30. So this information here gives me all I need to know about my five networks. And now I can take that information and start configuring my networks. Okay, let's do one more example where I've got four LANs that are all connected to the same router and these are all various sizes from four up to 41 hosts required. Well, of course, plus the IP address for the default gateway, which will be the de which, which will be the address of the, of the router. So really five IP addresses here, 21 here, 42 here and 11 here, but that doesn't actually change anything because it doesn't go beyond the power of two boundaries. Okay, first step, let's put these in order of size. So I have L3 that has 41 devices. I have L2 which has 20 devices. I have L4 which has 10 devices and L1 which has four devices. For 41 devices, I need a network size of 64. For 20, I need 32. For 10, I need 16. And for four devices, I will need a network that supports eight addresses. This first block of 64 will take this block right there. The second block is, is a block of 32, so I need the next 32 addresses for it. That's going to be this block right here. The third block requires 16 addresses. So the six, next 16 addresses will be 96 to 111. And then finally, I need a block of eight so that's going to be addresses 112 to 119. So now I need to figure out the network address and the subnet mask for each one of these networks. This first one is going to be the first address. So that'll be a dot zero address. Well, again, let's assume that I'm starting with the slash 24 network. So let's go 192.168.10.0 slash 24. So the network address here will be 192.168 dot 10 dot 0 slash 26 for 64 host network. The next one starts at 64 so that'll be 192.168.10.64 dot dot for the network address and this will be a slash 27 network. The next network starts at 96 so the network address is 192.168.10.96 dot 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 and this is a slash 28 network. And the final one, first address is 112, so 192.168.10.112, and this is a slash 29 network. So now I've got my network design down. Next thing to do will be to configure all the devices on this network. So this was variable length subnet masking, and I hope it's starting to make sense to you now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.